So today what we're going to be doing is the molar mass of a volatile liquid. I've prepared the Erlenmeyer flask. I've done it a little bit differently than in the book, but this is the Erlenmeyer flask. If you look at the top, you may notice there's a little tiny pinhole. I don't know if we can quite focus on that. The way I made the pinhole was to take this glass pipette and I've just punctured the lid with the pipette. And that hole actually serves two purposes. That's actually how we'll get the liquid in there before we heat it. And it's also the hole where the liquid's vapor will escape so that the excess uh, material that's in the flask has somewhere to go. So now let's go ahead and record the mass of the flask. So I've teared out the balance, and so let me go ahead and put the flask in and we can collect our mass of our flask and aluminum foil together. And now we're ready to add the liquid and submerge the flask in boiling water. And we'll re be recording those temperatures as we go along. So I pre-calibrated this pipette so I know that I have about a mil when I pump a pipette like this. And then I'm going to place it inside. So you need five mils, so I'm going to go ahead and do that five times, and then we'll run the experiment. We're just about ready to go in and make our measurements. That's the temperature of the water right now. Been pretty steady. And so now I have my flask and I'm gonna have to hold this. So I'm gonna put the camera down. I used a bigger beaker than they uh, uh, recommend uh, because it gives a better view of what's gonna be happening inside the flask. So I want you to be able to see that. So I'll do my best to do this part. I'm gonna put this flask in. The temperature of the water is the same as it was before. And I'll put that in there and I'm gonna leave it like that. And hopefully you can see it. I think I can hold it with my hand at first anyways. And I don't know if you can see it, but the liquid is beginning to boil on the inside. And what the boil, what it'll do when it boils is it, it will, um, displace the air that's inside the container. So you can see it going now pretty good. Okay. So I'm gonna hold that in with crucible tongs. Otherwise it can, it'll, uh, if I don't hold it down, the liquid condenses up the top. see the camera and do this at the same time. Yeah, I think this, this you should be able to see all of this. The goal is not to do it twice, right? Now when all that liquid is gone from the bottom, then I'll lift the container, I'll lift the Erlenmeyer flask out and cool it in the tub of water. You can just see it in the background. So I'm looking down at the top and I can see the boiling. I think maybe you can see it too. When that's gone, then I'll know that um, I've pushed all the air out of the container.
still liquid in the bottom. Oops. Damn. I think the liquid may all be gone. Yeah, it looks like it's all gone. So I'm going to remove this and cool it in the water bath. So I can hold this now. And I can put this in the water bath. And that'll help that liquid, the vapors, recondense so they don't escape. And we allow air back into the container. see there's liquid in there again and that's the condensed vapor so that's our goal is to get that to cool down and capture all of that liquid back all right so I'm gonna pause this here and we'll come back and weigh it all right so here we are I got to tear it out the balance I'll put this guy back in there I, dry, I dried it off well as also And that's our final mass. So the last thing to do is to figure out what the volume of this flask is. So what I'm gonna do is fill this up with water. To do is figure out what the volume of this flask is. And so, I don't know if you can tell, I've completely filled it with water. Maybe a little bit too much. I'll just take a little bit off the top. And what I'm gonna do is measure that into this graduated cylinder. And then I'll dump out when I get to 100 mils, I'll dump out the water and uh, I'll let you know how many times I filled it up and then we'll measure the last amount and we'll know how large this is. Now this is a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, that's the sort of like the maximum recommended volume. So it's not gonna be 250, it should be a little bit bigger than that. So we'll go ahead and make that measurement and then I'll show you what the data looks like. So I moved this to a place where it's easy to measure. Uh, you can see that it's just below 80. Um, so you can record that as your data. Now, before this, I used actually a small pipette and a, and a funnel to fill this up twice. So that's 200 plus this value. The last bit of information that you need is the barometric pressure, and I had to look that up online for this experiment. So when we did this experiment on that day, it's 30.14 inches of mercury as reported on the weather website. So you'll have to take that value and convert it into atmospheres to complete your calculations.